What's going on, guys? Welcome to Get Ready For It. Get Ready For It. The final Better With Paul Friday, that is. Remember, we have one special session coming up next week, but this is the final Friday, and we're coming heavy today. Coming very heavy today. What's going on, guys? What's going on? See, look at this. Can I say this is that even though LinkedIn has a slight delay, Ron Foster is always first out the gate, first out the gate on LinkedIn. So thanks. Thanks so much. I see you guys. I see. Let me let me just shout out some folks. Let me shout out some folks right here. I see Erica. What's going on, sis? Ruth, I see you. Kara, I see you. James, what's going on? What's going on? We got to say what's going on to Ron. What's going on to everyone, to everyone. Now, I saw a little comment here that I want to just explore for a quick second. Just a quick second. Kara says, happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Now, here's what I realized, because I'm, you know, I'm in London right now. And I realized that not only do a lot of people in the in Europe and should I say outside of the United States not know about Juneteenth, but quite honestly, I don't think a lot of people in the United States know about Juneteenth. As a matter of fact, let's not talk politics, but I, I heard that Donald Trump literally three weeks ago didn't even know what Juneteenth was, right? Although I don't know if that really makes anyone surprised that Donald Trump didn't know anything. Uh, but the point here, the point here is that Juneteenth isn't something that uh, is a popular day among people other than a lot of black people, because Juneteenth is something that I've always known about. And I want to just share something about Juneteenth that I think is of interest to everybody who's watching today, right? And this is what it is. We have to remember that, like, what really is Juneteenth? Juneteenth, June 19th, when Gordon Granger, I'll never, I can never forget that, Gordon Granger, right? He's a union, uh, he's a, like a, a union general, right? U union soldier. He takes his troops down to Galveston, Texas, and he tells everyone, right, this is June 19th, 1865, he tells everyone, but in particular, the enslaved, he says, guess what, guys, you have been emancipated, right? And the reason why he had to go there is because the Confederates had already lost the war. They lost the war two years ago, but because it was a stronghold, there weren't any Union soldiers down here, they had to go down to tell these enslaved folks, hey, guess what? You are free. So that's the reason why we celebrate June 19th, because that was the day that he went down there and told the last of the enslaved that you're free. So th this is this is a big day. This is a big day, not only in, in, in U.S. history, this is a big day in world history. Now, here's the, the little thing about Juneteenth that a lot of people don't realize, is that when Gordon Granger goes down to Texas and tells these folks, you are free, and he tells them on June 19th, 1865, it turns out that they were already free. They had already been freed. Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, right? We should know about this. My boys know about this, right? The Emancipation Proclamation, he signed that actually in 1862. It took effect in 1863. So what did that mean? On June 1st, 1863, these enslaved in Texas, they were already free. They were already free, but they didn't know, they, they didn't find out about this until two years later, even over two years, two and a half years. Think about that. Think about you being free. You're free, but you don't know you're free. Think about that for a second. You are free, but you don't know you're free. Now, there's no way we can equate anything, anything to being enslaved. But I think a lot of you know the feeling of being trapped, right? Being trapped, but in hindsight, realizing that you weren't trapped, you were actually free. And this is what I'm talking about. During this lockdown, what I've been so proud about this community, so proud with this community is that you realized during this lockdown, a lot of you realize, and type me if you realize this, type me in the chat, is that now that you're not going into work every day, maybe you were furloughed, maybe you know you, you still have to work, but you have to work remotely, you realized that, you know what? 
I'm actually not trapped inside of this company. I actually have skills and knowledge and I'm building a network that could free me from the from from the from, from from you know corporate bondage, right? I can actually be freed from this corporate bondage. I don't have to be beholden to this to this enterprise. I can create my own. I can create my own business. I can create my own my own enterprises, right? I can control my own future. I believe that so many of us during this lockdown period realize this whole time we thought we were trapped, but we're actually not. We're actually free. And that's why this pitch competition today is even is even of higher importance to me because everybody pitching in this competition are people who have been watching Better With Paul. We've had 30 sessions now. People have been watching the 30 sessions. A lot of these folks are working full-time jobs, just come, came up with, with business ideas, and they're telling themselves, you know what? I actually can control my own situation. I'm not, I'm not trapped, right? I'm not trapped. And I think that that is that is that is that is just I'm just I'm just so excited about that. Now, let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. I appreciate it, Beverly. I appreciate that, right? Appreciate that. Um, so now today, we're getting down to some serious business. Okay, today is pitch day. Today's pitch day. We had over five, or I, I shouldn't say over. We had, well, the last I looked, there's 567 entrepreneurs. So maybe one more jumped in there and we and I could say we had over, but we had 567 entrepreneurs register to pitch today, 567. Now, I had to select only 12 of these, right? So there, you know, it, was, it, was, it was incredibly hard. And one of the judges asked me right before I, we came on here, like, Paul, how did you select these folks? And let me just tell you the criteria real quick, because I thought that was a, a brilliant question. So one is I was looking for folks who are better with Paul community members, because this is in celebration of you all. So I wanted to find folks who show up. Maybe they're not always showing up in the chat, but I know they're showing up because I get messages. I see them share people who are part of our community. Right. This is this is about giving back to you all. That's what today is about. So that's one. Number two is I was looking for folks who had viable businesses. Right? That, that's important, right? You need to have at, at least you know a viable idea. I wasn't looking for any pet rock ideas, although pet rock turned out to be a very viable business. I wasn't looking for any croc ideas, although crocs turned out to be a very viable business, right? I was looking for ideas that that you know that 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 I thought were were viable. Who knows? Who am I? Right. But that but that's what I thought. The judges will really tell us the truth. Who, who am I? But then number three, number three is actually what put these folks in. And number three is I was looking for passion. David McQueen, who came on and, 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 and taught everybody how to pitch in, uh, earlier this week, he talked about the importance of passion. David's wife off camera talked about the importance of passion. Right. Passion is everything. In my opinion, I believe in winning by all legal means necessary. I believe in winning by all legal means necessary. And what happened with all of these 12 is that a lot of them hit me up in direct messages, like, Paul, I would really love to pitch, right? Or people advocated for them, Paul, you should have this person pitch, this is the reason why. So they didn't just follow the rules, they went over and beyond to express their passion and I loved it. So, and, and that's not to say that the other folks, the other 500 plus that that, that 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 didn't come on, that you didn't exhibit those things. These were just 12 people that I saw that exhibit that. Last, last note before I bring on the judges is that for everyone else who's on the list, I still plan to support you. So my goal is to do more of these pitch competitions virtually and give platforms to folks that have not ha really had an opportunity to, to, to pitch before in particular in front of credible investors. And on that note, right? You like that segue? I was trying to think of a way to segue into the judges and boom, there it goes. Uh, all right. So now let's talk about the judges. Let's talk about the judges. Um, let me, let me, let me throw this out to actually, you know, let, let's go right into the judges. All right. Let's go right into the judges. So now we have four judges coming to the table, right? And the judges, what they will do is they're going to listen to each of these pitches, each of, from these 12 entrepreneurs, and they're going to 
ask one or two questions. And then at the very end, they're going to tell us who they think is number three, number two, and number one in terms of the viability of their business. That's really what we're looking for, right? Now, here's the beauty. Everyone who competes is a winner. You all that are watching, you're winners. And here, here's the reason why, right? This is not just me placating. This is me telling you the truth, right? You are winners. Here's the reason why. One is that you are going to get a chance to see people pitch. So you're going to learn about the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of pitching. You're going to see it all happen right here. You can see people doing some great stuff and people doing some iffy stuff, right? So you're going to see all of that. Secondly is you're going to learn more about business. I always say that, you know, for me, you know, I, I was talking about how my first gig was, was, was working for an investment bank. And what I loved was learning about lots of different businesses, which then helped me when I then went on to launch my business. So you're going to learn about lots of different businesses. You're going to learn about lots of different business models, how people are making money, et cetera. And those may give you ideas for your own business. Third is that if you see ideas here that you like, reach out and contact these entrepreneurs. Maybe you can invest. Maybe they're looking for just $1,000, $2,000, right? Maybe they're looking for just you to purchase their product or service. Maybe they're looking for human capital and you realize that, you know, your, your day job isn't cutting it anymore and you'd like to join ranks with, with, with another company and boom, here's a viable idea that you could jump into. So th this is a big win. I also know there's a lot of investors who are watching right now, right? These 12, you, 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 may, you, you, may, you, may, you may like what you see, all right? So now let's, let's really bring on the judges, okay? Let's really bring on the judges. So first up, coming to the table for, who, who am I gonna bring? Okay, since I'm in London, since I'm in London, I, I, got, I have to pay dues to uh, the very first investment firm, investment entity that I ever went to visit, and I was highly impressed. We've got the head of their finance team right here with us. This is my sis. Let me get let me get the camera right. This is my sis, Mariola, right here from Cornerstone Partners. What's going on? Hey, that, that was quite an intro. I feel like before I get into work every day, just play that intro and it just gas me up every day. <laughs> <when I talk. laughs> hey, if you need me to do that for you, I will I will do that for you every day. I'll call you like, look, Mariola, come on. So but I wanted to bring you on first because really Cornerstone Partners was the first group that I went to. I'm highly impressed with everything that you all do, what you stand for. Uh, the grapevine told me that you just led a 170,000 uh, pound investment in a little software firm. If you could tell everybody just briefly about Cornerstone, I think they, they, they find it fascinating. Absolutely. I was, I was saying to my husband earlier today that I don't know, I, I didn't want to think it was a coincidence that you chose today for this, for this session. Because I think as we all think about Juneteenth and we all sort of reflect in our own ways about the very troubled, very long history of the world globally, particularly the U.S., we've seen with social injustices, racial inequality, imbalances, all of that. I think sessions like this on days like this are really powerful as we look to empower ourselves economically. So I think if we look back, I think decades from now, centuries from now, we're all going to be very proud of ourselves collectively for the work we're doing to empower our communities. And I think that will be sort of an economic uh, emancipation, if you would. And so I'm really, really excited to be here. But uh, in terms of Cornerstone, so we are the only um, angel investment network in the UK that focuses exclusively on investing in black and diverse businesses from black and diverse founders. Um, we've been in operation for a couple of years and we are now very actively raising money for a VC fund to do this on a much larger scale. Um, we're very, very proud of the work that we do. And to your point that you made about our most recent investment in coordinates board, I think we all found it really fulfilling that we're able to do that in a time like this uh, to properly encourage a community that there are companies like us out there who are looking for very vibrant, very energetic, very talented founders to see, to, to give money to properly scale. And so if you're a founder out there and you didn't get your chance to pitch today or you wanted to follow up with us, Please don't, we, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are always willing to to hear some great ideas. All right, super. Mariela, thank you for, so much for, for being a part of this. Um, I'm gonna pull you off, but then I'll bring you back on when it's showtime. Sounds okay. good. All right, so next up coming to the stage is one of my good friends who actually uh, is at Cornerstone as well, one of his mentors. 
And the reason why I'm so excited to have her here is because she leads one of the top accelerators as well as VC firms in Africa. She's coming to us, Founders Factory Africa. This is Kofa right here. And by the way, um, yeah, add in the street. Well, first, Kofa, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for bringing me into the community. Uh, thank you for doing this for the community. Absolutely. It is, it is my honor. I have a question for you. And, and that is, is that, you know, I really wanted to have a firm that represented investments going into African companies, right? Just give everybody a real taste who has no idea what's happening on the continent. I think it's fascinating what's happening. I think Africa is the center of the world, right? Um, t give us a, a, just a taste of what's happening in terms of the investments and the excitement in Africa right now. It is so exciting, Paul. I mean, uh, if you look at the trends over the last uh, decade, but particularly in the last couple of years, where we only had a few million pounds uh, or dollars going onto the continent. Now, last year alone, we had 512 billion go onto the continent in terms of uh, investment into startups uh, on the continent, right? So there is real innovation on the continent. There are really exciting founders, that are solving real problems, real problems that are ch changing people's lives. And it's just incredible to see. So I feel absolutely blessed every single day doing my job just on the continent. There you go. Well, it's a, it's a blessing to have you. So thank you very much. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, so I'm gonna remove you off and then when it's showtime, bring you right back. Okay. All right, so next up, coming to the stage is, um, Actually, coming to the stage next is I want to bring on someone who I, I was going to save her for the end, but I'm going to bring her right now. Right. Ladies first. Ladies first is this is someone who I keep saying I'm incredibly proud of. I mentioned her, I think, last session. And I just want to say this about her is that one of the first masterminds that I hosted, which was five years ago, I did this live mastermind for a weekend in Washington, D.C. Lots of, you know, upstart entrepreneurs came to this mastermind. The average age for the attendees of this mastermind were probably between, you know, early 30s and like 55, right? Early 30s and 55. Packed, packed room, right? The youngest attendee, we had one outlier, and I believe she was 19 years old. 19. And I was thinking to myself, when I was 19, would I want to be in a room full of, you know, folks talking about businesses? No, right? I, I mean, actually, I don't even want to tell you what I was doing at 19. But here's the point. The point is, is that she showed up to this mastermind at 19 years old and completely blew everybody away and now has gone on to have a career that I am incredibly proud of, incredibly proud of. Here's my sis right here. Denisha. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. Denisha, were you 19 at that event? I was, I was. <laughs> what, what were you doing at 19? Right, now that I think about it, <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot more exciting things to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, Denisha, just tell everybody, just, yeah. just catch everybody real quick, because I know you, obviously you've had an entrepreneurial career. Yeah. And 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 now now you're with with a with a with a little financial institution doing some things. Tell everybody yeah. real quick what what are you doing now? Um yeah. and and actually yeah, let's just stop right there. What what are you doing right now, Denisha? Yeah, so I recently uh joined the team at Grasshopper Bank. Grasshopper is a digital first venture bank and we're focused on democratizing access to business banking for founders and the uh, funds and investors that invest in them. So I spend all my time working with founders and investors in the space. There you go. So you'll be quite comfortable here. Yes. Quite, quite. <laughs> all right. Yes. Good stuff. Denisha, thank you so much. And we'll see you in a second. Sounds good. All right. So now, last judge. We have four judges. Right. You could see that already you could see like the judges. I mean, once again, this is nothing to be nervous about. But but these I mean, I would I might be slightly nervous if I was, you know, hearing hearing these judges. But they're lovely. They're lovely. But when you see the last judge, if you are a true better with Paul Watcher, you will you'll know the last judge and you'll know 
what I'm going to say to this last judge. Actually, let me just bring the last judge by saying this. And you guess who the last judge is. He is the patty champion, right? The patty champion of the world. Do you know who I'm talking about? The patty champion of the world. Who, who am I talking about, guys? Who am I talking about? The patty champion of the world is none other, none other. Well, I'm, I'm waiting for the, the delay. I'm waiting to see if, if anybody guesses. Look, his hand is, is over his face right now. There he goes. See, look, people are already guessing. They know who it is. He's the reigning champion of patties all over the world. It's oh, David Mullis. <laughs> I didn't want to come on the stream and laughing. You have me like cry laughing, Paul. <laughs> hey, uh, David. Oh, you are no, you're the goat. You're the goat of all patties. You know this, right? Wow, that's it. I'm the patty king. Patty, king. that's it. Just, that's it. I like that one, <laughs> David. Oh. David, it's 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 an honor to have you here. <laughs> it's an honor to have you here. Let me tell you real quick. Here's why I wanted to have you on, David. Though outside of the patty situation, which by the way, real talk is. I, I asked Jill, I was like, Jill, do we have any patties? Because David's coming and I want to have a patty in my hand. And she said, no, 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 you ate all the patties. So we, I had none. But uh, the, the last time you were on, you blessed yeah. us with how incredible the investment opportunities are in Jamaica. A lot of people were just like blown away, right? But if you could tell us just, just real quick, just as Kofo did about the continent of Africa, what about the Caribbean? Right. What, what What is investment looking like, activity looking like in the Caribbean? Well, so, so the nice thing in the Caribbean is that things were picking up certainly over the last five years. You look at something like the Branson Center of Entrepreneurship based in Jamaica for the wider region. That's Richard Branson that helped to support that. So that's a great, you know, incubator, no more of an accelerator program. You have you know, 10 Habitat, which is based out of Barbados. So we're seeing angel investor groups building up now across the region. And we, it's been supported a lot by the Inter-American Development Bank and the Caribbean, the yeah, IDB and so on. So this is great. Of course, one of the things I point out to people that uh, the Caribbean is un essentially, especially Jamaica, uh, same time zone as the United States, English speaking first for, for over 27 countries. And you know, a country like Jamaica, for example, has been winning or coming in the top three for the Microsoft Imagine Cup for the last 13 years. So this is robotics programming. So instead of sending work to India, for example, you could, you know, near shore it to somewhere like a Jamaica instead. Uh, so we see great opportunities there. And then if you're going to talk about the SDGs, right, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the UN is big on that. Well, we're better to invest than in the Caribbean. We got sun like crazy, right? And so solar would be a big thing. You want to talk about water conservation, climate change. There's going to be huge opportunities for impact investing as well in that region. So. If you're not paying attention, trust me. And then, and the last thing I tell all our potential investors, who wouldn't want to fly down to Jamaica or Barbados or Trinidad on business and get a tax write-off? Yeah, this is true. This is true. David, I apologize. I shouldn't have said anything about patties because no one in the comments, <laughs> no no one is, it's like no one's listening to you. They're just debating. Now they're debating who has the best patties. Is it tasties or delicious? They're Ooh. debating who invented the patty. Right. Is everyone's talking about? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But guys, as you can see, everyone's excited to see David back. All right. So, David, we'll see you in a second. <laughs> all right. So now. All right. Let's get serious, folks. Let's get serious. This is serious business here. This is serious business. As you can see. What do you actually let me let me ask you, what do you think about this panel of judges? Go ahead and enter in the comments. What do you think? Is it fire? We've got the U.S. hold it represented strong. We've got the whole Caribbean represented strong. We've got UK, right? We've got Africa, right? This to, to me, this 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 is this is a gold medal pa panel right here. Gold medal. Look at that. I see it right here. I see, I see the comments about the, the the quality of 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 the judges. All right. So now let's put the judges to work. You ready? And if you're ready, let me know. Let me know if you're ready. Remember, when we bring on all these entrepreneurs show them love, right? Show them support. I am going to be going to the crowd to ask for the crowd favorite. So you will have a voice in this, right? So there will be a crowd favorite as well. So make sure you're watching, make sure you are applauding each of these entrepreneurs. Cause I guarantee you the entrepreneurs will go back 
and they will read the comments, especially when they were speaking. So show them love, show them love. All right, let's bring our judges up real quick. Let's bring all the judges in. Let's bring all the judges in. All right, so now, now, all right. So judges, we ready? We're ready. Yeah. We're ready, okay. So let's bring on our first entrepreneur. Coming to the stage, I'm gonna see if I can if I can keep this with with her on this with with all the judges up and and she's gonna come on coming to the stage. This is Amaria, and she is presenting Align Body Solutions. Align Body Solutions. All right, Amaria. I'm on. <laughs> the mic is yours. You have two minutes. Awesome. The mic is yours. Okay, thank you guys so, so much. All right, here we go. I want soul shoes to people who have feet pain, but someone asked me, can you help me with my back pain? And I said, yes, but I kind of had to figure out how because I didn't know what. So I went on a journey and, and to try and find out what is this real problem. I found out that roughly 80% of the global population suffers from back pain. I mean, think about it, that's crazy. Stress, Stress depression, pressure, anxiety, I, I, lack of yeah. sleep, all emotional frustration, these are all side effects from back pain. Did you know that black people are not built like Chinese people? And yet, for some reason, we buy only Chinese products to help us with back pain. Example this, can this fit you? Can this fit me? Definitely not. So we needed to come up with a better solution and redesign something. This is what I did. My name is Amira and I am <sighs> the inventor and creator of the Liberty, which is a perfect name because it's Juneteenth, right? Now, imagine pharmaceutical industries, they make billions off of pain. This can't happen anymore. We have to do something about this. So my dream literally was help a billion people, help a billion people get back their independence free from back pain. How? Because we wanna do pre-orders of 3000 braces by the end of the year, but we wanna take the manufacturing from China and bring it in Jamaica and bring it in Africa because why not, right? So I need your help. Click the link I'm gonna put in the description and my partner's doing it as well. And then by supporting us, you'll help to solve the solution, the be the solution to the problem of back pain. Thank you very much. All right, super. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you very much. We like the package. <laughs> Judges, any questions? Uh, yes, I can start. Uh, Maria, awesome. I, I, great. I loved your passion. You have great energy. I, I was just making it easy for the screen because I was really good. And my question Thank you. is um, who designed it and do you have a patent for it? I design it and I have copyright protection for it. So it's my um, idea, intellectual property for it. Um, unfortunately, the five years that it took me to design it, it took all of my money. I'm a single mom. I'm on a Caribbean. I had, didn't have no job, but wanting to help people, it took everything out of me. So now I reach to that point where exploding it and bringing it to the world, I'm limited. So that's basically where the help comes in. Helping a billion people, I need access to that. And I need to trademark it everywhere. And all of that costs money as well. So, but it works and I have evidence and proof that it works and I'm not a doctor, but I speak and I listen to the people and, and it works. Thank awesome. I, I'd like to touch a little bit on supply chain. Uh, can you walk yeah. us through what your relationships with manufacturers look like? Have you identified them and what that process looks like? Okay. Well, believe it or not, my sister, thank you for that question. I reached out to China and I tried to get so many manufacturers five years ago. Would you believe that three of them turned me down because they wanted to create this? And I told them that, no, us black people, people of our style, we have more meat. We have different posture. Three of them turned me down because apparently no one that they knew wanted to, to, to redesign what they made. So it took a long time to find somebody who was open to wanting to go against the norm and create what we needed. See this, this fits us properly. This is a size, this is what works. And this is the quality that I was looking for. So I have a manufacturer in China, but I wanna get in Africa and I wanna get in Jamaica because I wanna give our people the chance to also make that money instead of always sending it abroad. You know what I mean? 
Thank All you. right. All right. Fair. Good questions. Good answers. And Maria, thank you very much. Panel, thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to bring thank you on. So much, guys. Thank you very much. We're going to bring on the next entrepreneur. His name is Aaron Adams, and he represents Accessible LLC. So this is Aaron Adams with Accessible LLC. Founder of Accessible LLC, a consulting firm that produces various project deliverables for our clients who are typically celebrities and professional entertainment brands. Today, I am seeking human capital with whom I can partner for the growth and further development of my business, as well as exposure for a digital product that we are preparing to launch. Recently, in the wake of the social climate and the publicized genocide of Black people in America, there's been a clarion call for the critical support of Black-owned businesses. I am personally adamant about supporting such businesses, and now more than ever, the call to do the same is widely being answered, particularly by Black consumers and intentional allies. Not long ago, I came across a post that explained how a Black consumer shopping for clothes for her baby stumbled on a business page with products that featured colloquialisms from Black culture. The consumer sent a private message to the business asking if they're Black owned. The business disregarded her question and in fact blocked her, and in so doing discouraged her patronage. Her husband, a Black entrepreneur with a significant following, exposed the situation on his page, which activated his audience to flood the business with the question, are you Black owned? Needless to say, the business is not Black owned and like Starbucks has effectively been canceled by many Black patrons. This situation and others like it has beckoned the question, how can consumers quickly and easily identify if a business is black owned, particularly in the age of social media sales? With that, I'd like to introduce Bobby, the black owned business identifier. Bobby is a trademarked brand that visually lets consumers know that a business is proudly black owned, thereby inviting the support of allied consumers worldwide. Thank you. All right. Judges, you could take it away if you have any questions. Can you talk a little bit about the verification or onboarding process of uh, the companies that would be on the platform? Absolutely. So we've required, we're, we're going to be requiring uh, for a, a business to either submit their uh, operating agreement along with a photo, um, a photocopy of their driver's license or the, uh, the license or, or state issued or government issued uh, photo identification that matches the business name. If they do not have the um, business name or the name of the person who owns the business on an agreement, we've also made it to where um, people can submit a one sheet for their business, their website, uh, as well as their social media pages and a photocopy of their ID as well. So there are a number of different um, options that we provided just to verify that the business is actually owned by, by a black individual. Thank you. All right, good presentation, Aaron. My question is about minority business enterprise certification that already exists here in the US. Mm -hmm. so the National Minority Supply and Diversity Council does exactly what you do in the sense of operating agreement. They go to the office, verify who works in the business, who makes decisions. Do mm -hmm. you see them as a competitor or do you see them as somebody to possibly work with? I definitely see them as somebody to work with, um, to help to assist with the verifications process. I don't have any direct inroads into the organization, which is why I'm seeking human capital to be able to partner in here. It helps steer that process. All right, super, super. Uh, we love it, Aaron, thank you very much. And I wanna just uh, do a special shout out to Shanice Sanders, who says, I see Paul go live all the time and I just ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've decided to watch. I love this one. He goes live all the time. I just hit ignore. I just dismiss that guy. <laughs> all right. So coming to the stage next, coming to the stage next, we've got Shambrikia Wise, uh, and she is presenting Sightseeing with Sandy. Hey, thank y'all so much for having me. Are y'all Can y'all hear me okay? Okay. It's a powerful thing to see someone like me doing something amazing. Representation matters, especially to Evan. Evan is 27 years old, and I met him when I was picking up this poster board behind me, other side, <laughs> at the local FedEx here in Dallas. 
And he saw it and he said, Miss Wise, is this you? And I said, yeah, that's me. And he said, well, what is Sightseeing with Sandy? And I said, we're a children's book series and we teach the world about geography and history and culture. And especially we get that message across to those children. And we do so with this little girl and her stuffed animal. And he sat back and he looked at it and he was like, that's just so amazing. On my way home, it hit me. I'm not just writing children's books. I am creating an entire movement that is going to maximize the potential and promise for so many kids, but especially our kids. Our kids are normally left in the gap when it comes to education and experience. And people like you and I, we know travel enriches us and it gives us these opportunities that we can't just have in a package. But what Sightseeing with Sandy does, we do our best to bridge this gap and bring the world to those children. Now we're living in a really interesting time right now and there are so many companies throwing money everywhere and I'm here for it. <laughs> right now we have $20 billion annually going to corporate social responsibility. 706 billion goes into education. There is still a gap. If Sightseeing with Sandy could penetrate the market at just a half of a percent of that CSR, that's a hundred million dollars for travel grants for families, for scholarships, for membership boxes on a monthly basis to these babies and so many other things that me and my team can create. But that's where we need you. I need help connecting to people and entities that realize equity is not equality. Systemic racism is at a hard stop and we can't do that anymore. Also, people that value the holistic benefits of travel. And lastly, we need people that realize it's overdue for Evan to have his hero. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jill. Thank you all for this opportunity. And I hope to work with you. <laughs> wow. All right. So so I, I messaged the group and told him I have goosebumps. I just want to charge it up. So love the passion. I have, right, I'm married. I have three kids. So this already speaks to me, but... The reason it hit me was my wife did digital arts in school in, in undergrad and one of her main projects was doing a series of books like she did art and she did a bunch of books for kids did illustrations so how much is a book that's a, that's what i want you to ask you how much is a book that's the first question for me it's 12 bucks and that just helps me with shipping it to you and um, i really am looking also um, for people to help me fund this book to get it to kids in the bahamas um, i'm really focused especially on those kids that were impacted by jorian and so i am doing higher costs but it's not coming back to me it's helping me buy a book so i can donate it and um, the first book was actually done for nassau so that was in honor of him. All right, so you definitely need to get in touch with me afterwards. I will commit today to buy 100 books from you and I will donate them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyway, please, we will be in touch. We will be in touch. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You have, you have to sign them, though. I will sign every single one of them, and so will Sandia. Her signature is awful, but I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Oh man! Wow, uh, da David, very kind of you. Very kind of you. Um, judges, any other questions? It's a related question, really. I just wanted to ask about your distribution channel. So, if people want to buy the book, where do they go? Where is it held? Is it a website that you have, or anywhere else? So, Amazon. Amazon is the best thing right now. That is not the the only way I'm looking at. But when you go to these private companies, they expect you to have so much up front. I just don't have that right now. But I do plan on on transitioning. But right now, you can go to Amazon. It's in English and Spanish. If you're interested in the Spanish version, I can provide that in the comments because, of course, the the title is going to be different. All right. Super. Thank you very much. Uh, Shambrika, thank you. Judges, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to keep moving. Uh, I want to say this. You knew, Shambrika, you knew something great was going to happen. You knew how, how I knew something great was going to happen? At the end of her speech, do you notice who she thanked? Do you notice who she thanked? She thanked my wife. <laughs> she was like, I just want to thank everybody. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> she said thank you to Jill. I was like, oh, my God. What the that's how you know you're gonna win, right? She's just like, Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I tell you what, that, that I love that one, David. David brought it home on that one. So thank you very much. Let's keep moving. We've got a duo coming next. I, I did allow a duo for this one, so we've got the duo of we have, and and the reason why is because we got he he he's he's coming from 
Jamaica, right? So we we got we 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 got uh oh uh oh uh oh we have to we have to remove uh we have to remove. Okay, so we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them on screen. I have to remove myself because only six of us could could stay on. So we have Patrick and Ann. Hey. Okay. So I am here presenting for Kitty's Cool Cats. And if you've ever been to Jamaica, you know that these uh, robots where passengers are packed together like sardines try to fill gaps in the transportation network. Now that Jamaica's borders are open again, visitors and residents alike need safe, reliable, and affordable taxi service without the risk of exposure to COVID-19. Kitty's Cool Cabs will provide prompt, friendly, and courteous service while ensuring safety. They will supply masks, hand sanitizers, Lysols, and a cooler filled with refreshing ting, yes, red stripe, and Jamaican water. And of course, delicious Jamaican patties. Patrick Neil Lewis, also known as Kitty, operates out of Ocherias, where he has a broad network of contacts. He has been a professional driver for over 20 years. And for the past 10 years, he's proudly served guests at the Rio Ocherias Hotel. He is seeking an investment of US $12,000 to allow him to purchase, license, and insure a 2011 Toyota Noah. And he will also buy an initial stock of patties, masks, hand sanitizers, drinks, including Jamaican water. He will serve two client avatars. During rush hour, a female 35-year-old hotel or store manager or worker who works in St. Anne. And during business hours, a female 35-year-old visitor to Jamaica who wants to travel with her family and friends in safety. Will you help Kitty, Patrick Neil Lewis, Keep Jamaicans and visitors alike super cool as they move around our beautiful island. Was Patrick going to speak or just you pitching? Uh, Patrick will answer questions. Yeah, you know, just so you guys know, Patrick's, uh, uh, the communication wasn't good. So he, he dropped off. So, Anne, I think you might have to help with the questions. Sure, I can. And he can come back whenever. Sure. So, so one question I have is I wasn't totally clear on is this is it an app that works like an Uber or what exactly is this? No, we're kicking it old school. So Patrick has a lot of contacts all over Ocherias. He's got some beautiful brochures, and he's going to call on everybody in his network of contacts, uh, managers, hotel operators, and so on, and he's going to get the word out that way. And in terms of the foreign market, he has a lot of passengers who've traveled with him over the years. And he's going to be uh, putting up a Facebook page and inviting all of them to come in and like. And he will share videos from his guests whenever they've traveled with him so people can see satisfied customers. And here he is. He caught back on technical challenges. Hi there, Kitty, Patrick. Hello. What's up? How are you guys doing? Thank you very much. We're good, Patrick. We're good. My network is not picking up so good. Okay, my network is not picking up so good, so I have to stand up. We're picking up. Any you more guys questions? Can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Any more questions for Patrick? Uh, I have a question around the business model. So how are you going to be calculating kind of the, the price of the trips as well as will you be giving uh, money to hotels or people who are supplying you guys referrals? Well, certainly we go with what the market will bear. Right now, if somebody wants to charter a taxi in Jamaica, it's very expensive. So what we'll do for the rush hour crowd is divide the price of a charter uh, among all the passengers and make it very affordable. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, that's it. All right, I tell you what, I'm, I'm just gonna uh, jump in because I know that the connection was bad, uh, but you, you guys are providing patties. That's all we needed to hear. We're good. We're good. I mean, and water. This, this, and King 
and ting. And 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 did you see David's face when you when you, when you guys said you're putting pat you're putting what pat everybody getting patty what? <laughs> All right. So we're we're good. So thank you thank you very much thank you very much Anne. All right. So now let's keep the party going. I see that the audience the audience loves what they see so far. The competition is strong right now. The competition is strong. But the last, so I, I have, there are two rounds. We have two more for the first round and the competition's getting that much stronger because coming to the stage, we've got Janine and she is, she, it's, it's C-A-F-F-E strategies. C-A-F-F-E strategies. And here is Janine. I know you've been frustrated with possibly the amount of uncreative. I know that you've been frustrated with the amount of uncreativity may be seen in your employees or definitely seen in the workforce. Well, let me tell you, you're not alone. Wall Street Journal did a survey with 900 top executives and they said creative thinking and curiosity is a skill that's rated as high as tech skills. And 89% of these executives said that there's a huge lack of creative thinking individuals in the workforce. And it's this uncreativity that is affecting profitability. And that's where Cafe Strategies comes in. As the 2015 Charter School Teacher of the Year, I've implemented these interactive methods within my own classroom. And I saw my kids' creative thinking flourish. So I decided to take these strategies to organizations and, and companies. And I witnessed the same result. With my background in psychology, education, and creative research, I've created the, this interactive, unique curriculum that involves online trainings and in-person tra tra trainings that is effective, and it's really critical for our adults in the workforce who've been educated out of their creative thinking abilities. Right now, Cafe Strategies is at an inflection point with the online learning and, and just continuous learning that's exploding right now and the huge lack of creative thinking in the workforce, we are ready to take our business to the next level. And right now we're lacking fun, funding to really do, do that. And we're also lacking strategic sales of connecting to these Fortune 1000 companies that are eagerly looking for this transformational type of training. We have a top team of educators, facilitate Taters. But our top team member is Sean T. Letford, the creative kid, because it's this childlike, look at the camera, it's just childlike curiosity and, and, and radical imagination that is the first step to creativity and powerful innovation. This is our mandate and this is our mission. What do you want to say? What do you want to say? Creative. What do you say? Be creative. Be creative. You heard it from the master. Thank you. Say bye. Bye. Well, that that, that I, you brought out the secret weapon. I knew somebody was going to bring out a secret weapon. I knew it was going to happen. Just so you know, David was having a little uh, audio issue, so he popped back out. He's going to pop back in. So, oh, actually, here he is right here. But I'll t I'll give it to the judges. Take it home. Thank you, Janine. Um, Hi. So I wanted to ask, how large is your team and? How have you scaled it from just yourself, I assume, to getting it beyond yourself to more tutors? And what is the percentage of a business that's online versus face-to-face -face in classrooms? Well, right now we're still at the start startup up phase. So really what I've been doing has been on my own, just, to, just the, that con connecting with me doing most of the tra trainings. Right now I do have a team of, of two, which consists of just assistant work. And then I, I can't contract with other facilitators and the rest mm -hmm. is just advi advisory boards. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you so much. We love this concept. I love it absolutely because I think this is so important. People undermine the importance of creativity, but like a child. A lot of innovation hubs, a lot of sort of even tech companies are trying to really tap into this thinking as they build solutions. Have you thought about your approach to scale and using sort of that B2B approach of actually partnering with companies? who are trying to do innovation, right, as a way and as a method for them to apply. Can you can you almost sort of put this as a business in a box type of product and actually offer to like innovation hubs and the likes? 
Yes, because a lot of my training is different from what I've seen out there. I've done the, re the re research and I found out that a lot of people don't really understand the elements of what creative thinking entitles, like abstraction, metaphorical think thinking, sensory ob observation. So really because my background is in education and I know how to teach big concepts in a, sim a simple way, yes, these things can be be packaged. And that's why you were, look we we're looking to really up our on online services and just have these be bun bundled. So no matter what field they're in and what field these businesses are, are in, it's still applicable because creative think uh, thinking goes across the board, no matter which field you're, you're in. All right, super. I'm going to call time, but I want to uh, point something out, Janine. I've, I've seen this uh, already happen in the comments, but whenever I see it, you already have someone saying that they want to join you as a salesperson here. Uh, Denise Scott, which is, in, which, which is, I like, I love that. I love that. She's like, I'm in, right? She's, she, she's in. Um, so that's wonderful. So Janine, thank you. Thank you for the secret weapon. That was, that was low. That was low, but thank you. <laughs> you got us. That was low, right? Be creative. So excellent job. Excellent job. All right, guys, keep the energy going. This is the last person in the first round. Remember we have two rounds of six last person from the first round coming to you. This is my man, Brian Ford. Brian, let loose. There you go. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. So my name is Brian with RecoverX and I got a secret for you today. So the ice age is over. And what do I mean by that? Well, you don't have to rely on a leaky bag of ice or a gel pack that doesn't stay cold enough or check this one, a big and bulky water circulating machine for your rehabilitative needs. What we've developed at RecoverX is completely electric, cold, and heat therapy. So this device at the touch of a button gets ice cold in 60 seconds with no ice or water, and it sustains that temperature the entire duration of your treatment session. It's an app-based system, so it's set it and forget it. So you can actually set the specific temperature and duration of your session, press go, and without anything else, it automatically reaches optimum rehabilitative temperatures. Now, if you're looking at it right now, it kind of looks futuristic. Well, that's because it is. It's the future of orthopedic care. And this is our knee device, and it is through manufacturing. But we're looking to grow this into a product line. So we already have prototypes developed for a shoulder device, a back device, and a general utility device that is all user tested and ready for manufacturing. And that's the exciting opportunity is we can capture market share within the orthopedic market and actually formally enter those channels through reimbursement and insurance models. So we can actually get people paying twice as much for this device once insurances are paying for it, which is a huge opportunity in this orthopedic space. And now I wanna extend the opportunity to you. So we actually have a term sheet for a $2 million round of financing. Uh, we have $8 million pre-money and we're looking to close it in the next month. So if you know anyone or if you uh, personally are interested in getting involved in this round, send me an email to brian at recoverx.io and I'll send you the investor deck and I'd love to chat with you about it. Thanks. Thanks so much, Brian. Uh, one thing I will say is uh, I'll connect with you after regarding your fundraises. I think I could be helpful. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your customer acquisition uh, strategy and how you plan to, to really spread awareness about the product. Perfect. Yeah. So we actually just closed our first pre-order on Wednesday, which is really exciting. We, we did 45K our first day and we did it completely digitally. So I was running our Facebook ads uh, we spent $11,000. We did 60K in revenue across the entire campaign during coronavirus. So that to us demonstrates that there is uh, traction and adoption within the markets. And specifically mm -hmm. when our customers are chronic pain management, they're also of lower socioeconomic status. So we were able to introduce financing options that was affordable to them as well. And then we scaled that into uh, B2B distribution going into physical therapy and orthopedic clinics. And that's when the reimbursement comes in. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just really a follow up question similar to that. So your customer acquisition cost as you scale up is going to seem quite high. How are you thinking about your strategy for scaling this? And is it a direct to consumer product or are you targeting hospitals and the likes is where you want to position the product? Yeah, so there are two different approaches. That's a good question. So yeah, the first is that direct to consumer model. Um, we did this all in house. Literally, our website was an iPhone and one of and our CEO's girlfriend, you know, as the picture. So we did it completely in house. We understand if we can activate an agency, then our customer acquisition is going to go down. And then that is the digital facing side. Then we already have partner distributed, like distribution partners within physical therapy, athletic training and orthopedic surgery lined up. So we just have to activate a national sales force and then they can be the sales force that brings the brand awareness for our brand 
to decision makers in those different channels. Sorry, very quickly again, what market are you targeting? Where are you based? Yes, uh, we're in San Diego. So right now it's domestic United States. Okay, love to touch base with you as well. We've just launched Founders Factory in New York, um, covering the Americas, so we'll love to touch base. Amazing, thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate your time. All right, last one for me, definitely. Oh, touch right, okay. as well. I, David, I knew you would be there. Yeah. We went over the rules. You get no more than two. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, man, go. <laughs> go ahead, David. I, I was gonna say, don't touch me as well. I, I have some relationships with some athletes, including some NBA players that have committed capital to us. I think this is something that athletes especially would, would definitely understand and can, can relate to. Totally. Yeah. Our, uh, our seed round as is led by courtside ventures. The primary LP is Dan Gilbert. So yeah, we're connected in the basketball space and I'd love to, I'd love to touch base with that. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Good stuff, Brian. Thanks, man. All right, guys, that was Brian Ford. Here's, here's what, here's, here's what I love. Leon is, is, is speaking the truth right here. This is going to be hard. That was just one round. This, this is, this is like, this is going to be hard. This is hard. This is hard stuff. All right. So now remember, audience, you get to pick your favorite, right? You get to pick your favorite. So you will have a vote at the end of this. Let's go into the second round. Let's keep it going. Timing is good. We're going to go right into Adrian with EKG CHE. So it's the Center for Health and Education. Adrian with the Center for Health and Education. There she is. Sorry, my mic was, I, I had to unmute my mic. Hi, everybody. I am Adrienne Vifus, and I am a survivor of a tragedy. One that my background in biomedical engineering or clinical psychology, not even my years of experience as a research analyst or the clinical drug trials manager while on active duty could have prepared me for, yet they have every single thing to do with preparing me for a time such as this. You see, Einstein once said that in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. There are 9 million black baby boomers and 13% of the caregivers in the United States are black generation Xers, formerly known as the latchkey children. I'm reaching out to you today because I don't want yet another family to have to go through the same pain and agony of going to doctor's appointments and not getting the answers that you deserve of being told that your concerns are not anything to be worried about, being misdiagnosed or even worse yet, let's just wait and see. Today, I am presenting to you an app. This EKG app is in memory of Eileen Kathleen George. It's an app designed to fill in the gaps of health disparities, health literacy and access to care. Imagine if you could just push a button and demystify all the information around a doctor's appointment. Experiences that uh, make you more informed, give you the questions to ask, and also allow you to be more prepared in the event of an emergency. This is like, like Schoolhouse Rocks meets Operation meets WebMD and they all got together and had a baby. I'm introducing to the world a non-intimidating educational platform where you not only get the education that you need, but it's a fun and engaging platform that would allow you to get to know and understand your body at a much deeper level and gather the information in a way that is immediately accessible in navigating a better quality of life. Now, what questions do you have for me? Again, I am Adrian Vifer the founder and the creator of the EKG app and the EKG Center of Health and Education, representing Eileen Kathleen George by the Center for Health and Education. I thank you for your time and take good care. Thank you, Adrienne, for the passion. Can you hear me? Great, thank you so much for, for that pitch. Yes, that I pitch. hope my sound came through. I think we've got a little bit of a delay, but we did hear you um, on that end. 
I just wanted to be clear on one thing. I think it's really important to be able to kind of like break down the information that we're getting from doctors and also be able to get answers to things that doctors can't even explain. I just want to know where is your data mm -hmm. coming from or the information that you're passing on to, I guess, your customers? And is it in any way sort of like verified or in any way checked at all uh, before it's passed on to, to your customers? Right. Well, I'm working with a team of doctors right now, as well as I'm gathering all the information that is available out there right now on various disease states. So what it is, is that the person will have an app on their phone and they would put in, say, for example, my stomach hurts. And the app would populate all the different illnesses that could potentially lead to stomach pain. And that's where they can start to take a list of questions to their doctor and ask them, well, I've been having these types of pains for certain amount of, for such amount of time and they would spe specify how much time and then they could start to ask it would it would tell them ask your doctor this ask your doctor that because what I've been able to pinpoint through my research over the years in various disease states especially especially different oncologies is that a lot of times people don't understand what questions to ask and that is where the disconnect comes between them getting medical information and getting the information to be able to really just um, vocalize what's going on with them. So we're getting information from the National Library of Medicine, the National um, Bureaus of Statistics, and various different government databases, as well as private, um, private researchers. So we're going to aggregate all that data. But it's going to be an app where people can go on and get information specific to themselves that is really looking at how do Black baby boomers particularly go to their doctors with information and ask the right questions so that they can get a better diagnosis and know what steps to take right away. All right. Super, super, super. We love the passion. We gave bonus points for the coordination of the flag, the headband, and the necklace. I, I, she didn't like that's that's how you know. That's that's how you represent when the background matches the necklace that matches the headband and the, the glasses too. So thank you very much. That was well done. Very well done. Very well done. Coming to the stage. This is in the second round. Number two on the second round. The competition gets even tighter. I've seen some people say in the audience or ask if they can vote for two people. No, only one. Only one. We've got my man Albano representing Tier Social. So Albano representing Tier Social. Hi, Ron. I'm not sure if you can hear me because my sound went out here on, on my end. I just got a thumbs up if you can hear me. Wonderful. Can't hear you guys at all. Uh, let's do it anyway. So uh, my name is Obano Giga, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Tier Social. Uh, Tier Social is a peer-to-peer -peer platform that allows educators to connect, collaborate, and maximize their personal and professional development. I originally got the idea when I joined Teach for America, and I served my community in NRC, Brooklyn about eighth grade math, um, I quickly realized uh, that the life of an educator is a very difficult one. And quickly, I became very overwhelmed with the workload. Uh, I felt underconnected, under-resourced, um, and generally overwhelmed. It didn't really hit home until about 36% of my then colleagues, friends, uh, and fellow teachers actually left our school at the end of my first year. And I realized this wasn't an isolated problem that was just happening for me, but this was actually happening across the entire US. Teacher attrition is an all-time high and has doubled over the last 20 years. Annually, we're looking at about 200,000 teachers that leave the profession. Now, 200,000 teachers are affecting millions and millions of students' lives. Additionally, there's an added cost for the districts and the schools in terms of replacing said teachers. Um, this has been a long-going problem. So the idea with Tier Social was inspired was to create a platform where teachers connect to one another without borders. Um, an eighth grade first year educator connect to someone who's had multiple years of experience and through the platform, uh, they will have a sense of familiarity because it is the UX is designed to look like a social network. Um, but with the added bonus features of being able to select exactly who you want to connect to, having complete autonomy over uh, the filters in terms of subject, grade, years of experience, location, and additionally, 
um, to be able to connect to in terms of what you're looking for, whether that's lesson planning, whether that's specific stand that they need more help on, classroom management, um, and generally what we're hoping to do through this platform um, is to have a globalized, interconnected teacher community. Because at the end of the day, teachers do learn best from other teachers um, in which they can share resources and collaborate and eventually lead to enriched pedagogy, um, stronger teaching, and boost retention in those schools and lower attrition. Uh, right now, we're pre-revenue, and we are looking to connect with the right partner in terms of expanding our reach uh, and our goals and our impact. Uh, we're currently in talks with one of the larger, largest um, charter networks here in New York um, come September, and we will take it from there. Right now, we're not really looking so much so for funding because we are at the very beginning of our um, startup process, um, but if we can find the right partner that believes in this mission, um, and understands the educational landscape where we can expand more in terms of user growth and acquisition, um, that would be ideal. Thank you so much. All right, Albano, can, can you hear us at all? Can you hear me or no? Okay, I, I guess not. If you look Sorry, in the- so Okay, oh wow. If you look in the chat, the judges just presented questions in the chat. Oh, okay. If you could, if you could hear that. One one, yes. one question yeah. while, while you're looking at that, how how do you make money? That was one question that David asked. Understood. Um, got it. I can I can hear you guys now. Yes. Okay. Um, perfect. So in terms of how we make money, we want to keep it uh, free for teachers as much as possible. As we all know, teachers don't make much, so an additional cost to whatever they're already paying for uh, wouldn't be ideal. What we want to do is partner with the schools in order to take the data that their teachers are using, anonymize it, and then share that with the school in terms of uh, them pursuing specific question developments that they would uh, be better informed of due to the data they're bringing from our app. Um, we did play around with a model of subscription-based model, which will be fairly straightforward, uh, something nominal to three to five dollars if we were going to um, uh, allow teachers to purchase it. But I think at this point, that might be a conversation for down the line, but at this point, we really just want to partner with the schools, we want to partner with educational nonprofits, um, uh, educational research centers, and colleges as well. And sorry, I think the sound might have gone out again. Um, the go-to market strategy to bring teachers onto the platform. Okay, how do you okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, um, partnering up with Charter Networks right now is the first move that we're making. We're also going to focus heavily on social media, on digital, digital advertising. Um, I have a team member who sort of specializes in Facebook ad space. Um, so doing our fair share in terms of marketing online, um, but as well as you know targeting educational conferences, whether they be virtual or in person when things come back online, um, and sort of building partnerships across the board uh, with different organizations that can then, or, or let's say even teacher unions that can then inform uh, their specific members for our app. Um, next question. Okay. Uh, sense of a user journey. Okay. Right. So we're still an MVP right now. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, last I'm, I'm sorry. And oh, we are I'm sorry. Really what, yes. One second. I just wanted to, just to, yes. to read that. This this will be the last one. But I just wanted to read it so everybody knows what the question sure. is. Uh, I think this is uh, you, you're doing Kofo, the last one, right? Um, what 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 market is prime for ed tech? It sounds like you're still in the MVP stage. I'd like to get a sense right. of your user journey. This question. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's t technology. You, 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 know, you know what I find funny about this too? Is uh, I'm doing the, the exact thing that nobody should do, right? Because you can't hear me. I'm talking louder. You notice I'm like leading to my mic, Albano, so here's what she said. <laughs> Why am I doing that? You can, <laughs> me yelling is not going to do you. <laughs> but I tell you, so did you hear that last question or, or no? So it was, um, I'll just try and read it really quickly. Yes. Okay. Mark is fine for EdTech. Agree. It sounds pretty MVP. I'd like to get a sense of your user journey. Absolutely. So um, this one from my own experience, 
of being a first year educator, I mean, you are going to be hit with so many different areas which you are simply not prepared for as much as commitment that you may have as an educator and you might figure it out, but this eliminates uh, or at least attempt to eliminate um, sort of the, the hurdles and the pitfalls which every first year educator goes through um, by allowing accessibility and connectivity across the board. What happens, unfortunately, is, and this happened, I heard of this a lot during my first year, it was if you survive your first year, then you'll probably be okay. And I just don't think that's, that's an okay statement to make. Every educator, when they join, doesn't get in for the money, but they get into it to create an impact. And because they're under-resourced, under-connected, or there simply isn't a model which allows them to maximize their efforts in the classroom and out, um, to me, that's simply not okay. So hopefully with this, we'll be able to get a first-year educator all the way into someone with more experience who's able to join, really utilize the platform, give back to their community, and grow um, together, essentially. All right, super, super. Thank you so much, Albana. We appreciate it, especially you working through the through the tech stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Good questions, Thank judges, you. which we love. Thank you. Um, we're going on to our next. We only have four more folks remaining. You see the competition is tough right now. Four more folks remaining. Our, our, our next person, um, I think there might be a challenge with the connection because I see that it's saying that the device is is not connected. So while while that person, I, I tell you what, uh, Nagwazi, I think you're waiting for this, the person in front of you to join. You could go ahead and jump in because I, I think he's having problem uh, connecting right now. Uh, so let's let's try to uh, you know reshift that Nagwazi. So you could come on, and then just just as we are um, you know waiting for that transition, one of the things that I think you'll find interesting is that everyone's bringing something different to the table in their pitch. There's different levels of of passion. There's different setups. There's different cameras. I saw someone uh, uh, look like a 4K situation <laughs> that I need for, for filming my TV show. I was like, hold on for a second. It's a nice camera, right? So you see there, there's a whole variety, but at the end of the day, you see how it's different. Okay, here we go, here we go. I see that it, it connecting. We see that they're, they're bringing something slightly different. Everyone's bringing something slightly different to the table. So let's keep it going. We have three to four more folks here coming to the table next from South Africa. We've got my sis Nikwazi. Take it away, sis. Right, oh, I'm so, well. I'm sorry. I, I didn't even do <laughs> justice on. Uh, uh, well, I, you take it away. Let me stop talking. You take it away. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Early childhood development has been recognized as one of the most powerful tools of breaking the intergenerational cycle of poverty. Picture this: a network of women-led micro child care centers in the poorest communities of South Africa that provide quality child care, good education, nutritional food, a safe and warm environment, and where the teachers and the owners are able to earn a fair living wage. But this isn't the current case. My name is Nogwazi, and I run an entrepreneurship and small business development agency in Johannesburg, South Africa. In 2017, I was approached by a nonprofit to provide women in our poorest communities who run daycare centers with business skills because the existing interventions only focus on upskilling teachers and providing some support for children. On average, these centers in these communities charge as little as eight to $10 per month per child. And 20 to 30% of these parents cannot afford to pay. These women don't kick the children out, and therefore they don't generate enough revenue to cover their operational costs. I designed a program that focuses on business, financial, and digital skills, as well as, well as improving personal mastery. We bootstrapped this project in 2017, which had such a positive impact that in 2019, we were able to receive grant funding grant funding from Procter & Gamble to run this in another community. This project is designed to run for 12 months and we have helped 37 businesses since the 2017 pilot. Yet, one township in South Africa has 80 to 100 of such businesses that need similar support. I realized that in order to have a real impact and to achieve our vision, we need to support more businesses 
for a longer period of time. And that's why I'm here today. I'm looking for great minds who will help, who will be able to advise and assist us to pivot what we initially designed as a short-term project into a sustainable social enterprise that can easily scale and support hundreds of similar businesses across the continent and developing markets. Thank you for your time. Well done, Akwazi. Uh, really good pitch, really polished, really came across really well. Thank you so much. And thank you for the amazing work that you are doing. Um, you. You, said, you said pivot, which is my middle name. That's all I think about all day long, how businesses need to pivot. Uh, so I'm more than happy to give you some of my time. I just want to clarify, is this a non-profit or is this a for-profit? I'm in Brantford team uh, in Joburg as well, so that might help. So it's, it is the for-profit. So currently, um, I run a consultancy where I do this work with business schools and other accelerators and incubators. And so this was a passion project to take the work that I do with these, I guess, organizations can, that can afford to support what I'd say more um, savvy entrepreneurs and bring it to, to, our, to our poorer communities and bring those skills to our poorer communities. So it really started as a passion project. And now I'm sitting here and I'm saying that it has a potential to become a social enterprise. And I don't want it to be a, non, a nonprofit because the women I have met are true entrepreneurs. They have bootstrapped, they have put together money and they have been able, I mean, one lady started with three children in a shack and today she has over 50 children of which at least 80% of the parents are able to pay the school fees. And so for me, it's about teaching them the skills to become self-sustainable rather than moving into a nonprofit model. Nice, thank you very much. All right, judges, I think we're good. Nikwazi, thanks so much. I think everybody, you know, I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize how um, the seasons are different than in, 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 in South Africa in particular versus say the US. Like it's probably 40 degrees in South Africa. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, you got a scarf. In a <laughs> it's freezing there, right? <laughs> so so there, what's the temperature there, Nikwazi? So I think um, about now it's about probably eight degrees, eight degrees. Yeah. All right, Celsius. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, yeah Celsius. Forty something degrees Fahrenheit. You know, so it is. It's freezing. You need a hat yeah. and a scarf there. All right. So good stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, well done. I could see that the audience is having a tough time. It's interesting. I could kind of see the flare ups on comments. I think there's going to be a lot of debate. I think among the judges, there's going to be a lot of debates. I think there's going to be a little, a little fight going on among the judges. But we still have three more to go. We have three more to go. So coming to the stage, representing all of the United States, all of the United States, we've got my man, Tommy. I'm going to take it away. Donald Trump just announced a $1 trillion infrastructure trillion. That we never see the light of day. Hold on one second, Tom, Thomas. I'll tell you what. Let's let's make sure we do this right. There's a lot of uh, I don't know if the judges can hear you properly. There's a lot of uh, feedback behind you. I want to make sure that we we get this clean. Let's oh, wow. let's see if we can get it clean. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I see I see the next person in. I'm gonna bring on the next person and see if you could come back and reconnect. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just so we, we can make sure that we get we get that clean. All right. So now coming to the stage next. He was ready. He was already in the queue ready. So we know we're going to get fire. This is the next contestant. His name is Paris and he's representing Afroflix. Hello, my name is Paris Roger. I'm coming to you live from Toronto, Canada. Um, Afroflix.com is a new streaming service that I'm launching. Uh, with international partners from around the world in different countries. Think of it this way, uh, what we're doing. If you take the country that makes the most African films, which most of the African community knows, 
is actually uh, Nigeria through Nollywood, and they make 200 films a month. Now, if you start taking films from other countries in Africa, say like Ethiopia, 100, South Africa, 25, Egypt, and you go on and on and on, Senegal, uh, Uganda, Kenya, and then you start broadening your borders internationally. So now you're starting to look at uh, Europe and the UK, North America, Bahamas, Jamaica, and you go on and on and on. Uh, so uh, can I connect with a headset? Uh, can you guys not hear me? Is that better? There's a lot of backgrounds. Of, okay. oh, oh, no, no, Perry, that's for Thomas. You're, you're good. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Not so um, anyway, so uh, the vision of Afroflix is to uh, what sets us apart from almost all of our competition, and we have lots of it. Don't, doubt, don't get me wrong. But what they do is baby steps. There's a lot of strictly African channels out there for streaming services, but they show only uh, a handful of films that are winning awards. And that only represents like, you know, 1% of all African films being produced worldwide, not just out of Nigeria or on the continent of Africa, but worldwide. So our first stage is to put as much African content into one, uh, um, one channel so that you have a wide variety uh, across the board from filmmakers all over the place. Um, and then stage two, to beef that all up, we're gonna be opening up many film studios around the world, South Africa, Jamaica, the Bahamas, the United States, Canada, the UK, uh, Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, Ghana, and, and so forth. And that way we can support the black uh, or the African filmmakers from around the world to continue making the films their way. So we'll be producing with them exclusively and then uh, 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 for Afroflex, and we'll go into like a five or 10 picture deal with most African filmmakers around the world so they can produce with us. And then our third stage is where we team up with nonprofit uh, NGOs around the world that um, uh, uh, help uh, at-risk youth, uh, specifically in uh, um, like in Uganda and stuff, in the big refugee camps, and they teach at-risk young men and women uh, filmmaking skills to make their own films. In fact, I own the Toronto African Film and Music Festival in Toronto, Canada, and I've seen some really great films that are actually better than some seasoned f uh, professionals up there. Uh, uh, coming from kids that are uh, between 16 and 19 years of age, coming from uh, and to unite all of the filmmakers around the world, we're going to give them a platform for everything. And why I know this will work, a new service uh, uh, about two years ago launched out of Nigeria called Iroku TV. Within six months, they had a half a million subscribers in North America alone. And within 18 months, that uh, 800,000, and then they peaked. And they peaked because they were only showing Nollywood films. They weren't showing all African films. So our vision is to show all African films from around the planet uh, and letting the consumer uh, uh, judge and choose for themselves. So right now, there is more African content being produced than anything else on the planet. And yet, it's also the most inaccessible. So we're going to change that unequivocally. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for the presentation. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the film studios. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a bit of a capital intensive endeavor. And I also want to understand for creators who work with your film studios to produce content, if they are going to have to exclusively license that content, where does the ownership breakdown fall? OK. so. Um, in the first year, uh, we're only going to be streaming. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be picking up content, old and new, alike, right across the board. Our only objective for a film to be put onto ours is we have to have uh, non, uh, um, uh, non-exclusive worldwide rights for internet because we're not going to get in the game as Netflix and Disney and Amazon do where they have to buy per territory and then you have all this and it costs you hundreds of millions of dollars to do that. I'm not interested. We're streamlining the process. If it's not available worldwide and we can't buy it for one person, we're not interested. Just plain and simple, because it's too. It's 
I want to put more money in the filmmakers' pockets than putting it, spreading it all over everywhere else. Uh, so in year two, when we start opening up the studios, we're not opening up big, huge Hollywood studios here. These are studios that will probably be like on a couple of acres of land. Most of the films are going to be shot in various locations. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll slowly, gradually, as revenue come in, we'll start opening up the studios more and more. As far as the, uh, what the, uh, the filmmakers are doing, they'll make the films their way, the way they want to produce them, the way they want to make them. And we're, we're footing the budget. So as far as distribution is going, the only, the only thing that we want are exclusive online rights. They can put it in film festivals if they want. If they want our help to do that, we'll do that as well. Um, and we'll expand that. So think of it this way. If uh, Nigeria is doing 200 films a month, think about what we could do internationally by year three by producing anywhere between 800 to 1,200 films a month uh, internationally for African filmmakers. And they can continue making their films because we'll do a multi-picture deal with everybody. And there's no, uh, unlike Hollywood studios, there's not somebody overlooking the scripts to say, oh yeah, we think this is right or this is right. We don't care. We want it all. And I'm not running everything. We've got international partners in multiple countries. Everybody's got 10 to 15 years experience in the business. They either run film festivals or they're producers and directors and famous people that we've got on board now. Um, so they're, they've got a wide selection of individuals and they're all joining the team uh, as far as from Egypt all the way down to South Africa and everywhere else. Sorry, I know I'm rambling. Just, yeah, just keep the, the, the questions going. Uh, Kofo, I know that you had another question. Um, yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll be very brief. So uh, as the Nigerian in the room who is for Nollywood Film, I'm just a little bit curious that a part of this is cultural and at the risk of saying the elephant in the room, um, you cast as the random white guy, right? So I'd love to know about the leadership team and know what is the representation in terms of the people trying to drive this along with yourself? Uh, part of my uh, leadership team uh, Karen King, who I've hired on to be our president, she's the top African uh, Canadian female film producer in Canada with 35 years experience. Uh, I talked to her, she said yes in five seconds. Um, uh, my CFO, Lincoln Greenidge, uh, run, used to run billion dollar uh, budgets just for IT. Um, he saved more, com uh, more companies uh, internationally than I can count. Um, uh, our leadership in Africa consists of uh, Laura Lehart, who's, uh, who's a line producer for 20 years uh, in West Africa. We're, we're not going to be setting up shop in Nigeria, as per se, but we're going to be nor just north of them in Ghana. So we'll be opening up a film. In fact, we already have an office over there uh, in Accra, uh, where my wife is actually from. And that's why I got <laughs> started on all this. Um, so... Um, uh, so that way we don't have all the legalities that what you know all the big players are now sinking a little bit of money in the Nigeria film industry are, are having. Um, uh, so we can size sweep that and, and do that. Um, uh, uh, Kaf is uh, uh, she's a famous a uh, uh, actor and, and producer in Ghana. She just got back from there last December shooting two feature films and, and a short film. Every time I'm in public with her in Toronto, there's a fan, everybody. Everybody wants to take a snapshot of everything for her, so it's really great. She's got like over 200,000 followers just on her Instagram. Uh, there is uh, uh, so many. Uh, 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 Sharif is part of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, film festival up in uh, uh, Egypt, who I connected with last year. Uh, they brought me out to Egypt to see the pyramids and everything, which was great. Um, I sat on a panel about African distribution there. And um, he's got 20 years experience. Um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, names are uh, beyond me at this moment in time, but in Ethiopia where they're producing 100 films. I, I, I tell you what, I, I think this is good only because we're, we're over time, but here's the thing. My man said this, bonus, he said it's perfect. He said, his wife's from Ghana, it's all good, guy. <laughs> 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 he's like, look, he said, "Rice from Ghana, it's all good, guys." <laughs> so that, that was that was good. You know what? I want to say this. I respect the question. 
I respect the answer because guess what? Every single person watching, we were all like, okay. But and just so you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg in what we're doing. And somebody asked the question, are we exploring music? You're damn right we are. We're going to be putting all African culture on. It doesn't matter what it is. We're going to be doing fashion, music, everything. But we're going to start with what works right away because then we can get the most viewership right away. And that is films because the Internet currently, as we all know, in this crisis. You know, I'm sorry. We're, we're over time. But I, we, I, think, I think we got it. Judges, I think we're good. We got great questions. That was a great answer. Great answer. Actually, I say great. That was very Freudian of me. Did you notice? Because Paris, you had lots of great answers. But when you said your wife is from Ghana, I, that was I, I was focused on that. Great <laughs> That's right. my secret weapon. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, guys. So now you can see it's getting hot. It's literally getting hot. Nikwazi cooled us down right with that temperature. Now, now it's it's real hot. We only have two more to go. And I know they're bringing fire, right? So next up is Thomas. Sound is ready. He's representing Kataba, right? This is my man, Thomas, representing Kataba. Can you hear me at all? Oh, okay. So Donald Trump just announced a $1 trillion infrastructure spending package that will never see the light of day. But that's okay because in the US, we already spend a trillion dollars on infrastructure annually, $300 billion of which goes to public non-residential construction. And that's really important because public non-residential construction contracts mandate minimum disadvantaged business enterprise utilization levels. The challenge is the compliance process for doing that is complex, cumbersome, and lacks standardization across municipalities and agencies. But that's where Catawba comes in. Catawba is a compliance automation app that enables general contractors to pay DBEs directly through our app and then auto-generate the required compliance forms for each municipality. To do this, we collect uh, information from GCs, DBEs, and the project information up front and then re reuse it throughout the duration of the contract. Then we auto-recalculate the utilization levels after each payment. We make money by charging a subscription fee for both GCs and DBEs and also a payment processing fee. Now our big hairy audacious goal is to standardize the com DBE compliance process throughout the US. And to do that we're going to need to become the system of record for municipalities and agencies. But our real surprise here is the why. Right now in the US, black unemployment is at 17% and climbing. We envision a world where black unemployed professionals or black unemployed workers can find, com find work on with com companies on Catawba. So a partnership with Catawba or an investment with Catawba today means that you are ensuring that Black Lives Matter to black people, not only in deed, but in dollars. Thank you. I can't hear anybody. If you could just give a one sentence description of the company, how what would that be? A one sentence description of the company? Yeah, of what you guys are doing. Katawa is a compliance app that automates, enables general contractors to pay DBEs directly through our app, and then we auto-generate the compliance forms that each municipality or agency requires. Got it, that's helpful, thank you. I just wanted to piggyback off that. So where are you in the process? So is it fully live? Do you have a few clients on there? Are you still in the development phase? Is it yes, we're in the development phase. We built the back end and we're working on the um, workflow engine because the truth of the matter is um, municipalities and agencies are going to fight about, they're really protective about their current processes. And so we're going to have to be flexible before we can able to get to the um, standardization process. So um, we, we also are in the, we are DBEs in that space as a from a service perspective. So our go-to-market go strategy is to 
work with the current contract GCs that we already have relationships with to get them to pay us through the platform. And that's how we'll test it. All right, super judges. We're good. Good on questions. All right. Sounds good. You know what, Thomas, you, David is the Patty King without question. Thomas, you are the acronym King. <laughs> the king. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> I was just like, look, here's my presentation. And here, like, here the that was man, nice. Like, look at that. Look at the comments. Nicely done. Nicely done. Thank you very much. And by the way, I don't know what you did to the sound, but now your sound is better than everyone's sound. <laughs> that one move literally is better than everybody's sound. So there you go. All right. So that's Thomas with Kataba. Thomas with Kataba. And ladies and gentlemen, we're at the very end. This is it. So right now, you probably have some favorites in mind. Let me tell you what's going to happen. We're going to go to we're going to go to our, our our last contestant here, last competitor, and then the judges are going to go away. They're going to convene for a little bit. I'm going to convene with you all, and we're going to select a winner here. So last but not least, last but not least, we've got Kaywanda Lamb, and she's representing Spanish. For small business. Woo! Hola a todos. Como están? Hola, hola, hola. Okay, so I've been waiting for my moment. Thank you for having me, Paul. Super excited to be here. Hi, everyone. I'm Kay Wanda Lamb with Spanish for Small Business. And yes, I'm African American and not Hispanic. So, what do we do as Spanish for Small Business? Well, we take the guesswork out of you learning Spanish. We help you get what you need specific to your business and your industry without having to go to school for four years, two years, every day, no homework. Well, a little bit, right? No grades. And we do this so that you can stop leaving money on the table and you can connect with your customers, increase your bottom line and service the market that needs your goods and products. So how did I come up with this idea? Well. I've been a student of the language for 24 years, a teacher for 14, and an avid lover of travel and food and culture. And I always say, they're my people. Son mi gente, right? I do that all the time. And so what does this do for you? Well, you may have had customers come into your business and you've had trouble talking to them, trouble servicing them, or you've had to say, I'm so sorry, but we don't speak Spanish, so I can't help you. And guess what that's doing? That's helping you not have as much as you need, your team not have what they need, and these folks are still looking for people who can help them. But I solved that problem. We offer one-on-one -on -one customized language lessons in just one hour a week. Our um, flagship program is three months, and it sounds like a long time, but it's 90 days. It's It's tailored to you. It's smooth. It's simple. It is work, but it's beautiful. I've been doing this for about five years, and this is my first year going full time. And so I'm here today because I need some human capital, and I would love some investment capital. I do everything myself, and I have had rave results. My students are speaking Spanish by class four, and at the end of 12 sessions with me, they are rocking and rolling in their business. So Spanish for Small Business exists to help you connect with your customer and impact your bottom line. And in the era of COVID, pre-COVID, during COVID, after COVID, our people still need folks who can communicate with them. So I build cultural awareness every class. I build upon what you have already learned, keep pulling it out of you, getting you to be conversational instead of focusing on writing, which is a traditional method. And apps are fun. I love the things on here too, but guess what? People aren't speaking. You know why? Because you need someone to speak to. And that's where I come in. So I would love to scale myself. I would love to scale myself with people. I would love to scale myself with digital products. And I would love your support today. <clears throat> Thank you. Muy bien, muy bien. Gracias, señor. Hablas no, español, entonces. No, no hablo español muy bien. No, Un poquito, no. No practico, no practico mucho. Qué bien, me encanta. This is great, right? So I, I grew up between Jamaica and Miami, and some of the judges are asking how big of a problem this is in the U.S. And as someone that lives in Florida right now, I said, this is a major, major problem for us. So. 
how does this scale? Because you're based in one location. Is it that you're going to do online training because it's one on one? How does this scale? On one with me virtually, I have the potential to handle 15 to 20 clients a week myself, right? So that's over a three month period. My goal is to only have 15 to 20 one on ones. And then I'm only using certified teachers. Now, I love native speakers, but guess what? I'm a real teacher, guys. I've been doing this a really long time. I love y'all. But listen, I don't need you to keep teaching me how to say the car is blue and the sky is blue and where is the beer and you know how do I go to the hotel? I need Spanish for my business. And so that's what we do. So I want people who understand pedagogy and I've already been in talks with teachers who are ready to join me. So I would like to be able to pay them. And this is a high end program. Okay, so this is a, a high price product. It's not too high price, but it's more high touch. So this is why it's a premium product. And it ranges from 1800 to 3000 right now just to work with me. And what I want to do is offer this to certified teachers because, you know, teachers don't make a lot. Right. And uh, this is a way for them to take care of their families and then also put some good into the world. So I would teach them my system. And so we scale, that's one way. The other way we're gonna scale is by creating a course. I actually have one that I teach live, okay? And so eventually it will become a digital course, but better than the ones that are out there because we still need that human interaction to speak. So that's how. I have a question. Great to see you, by the way. Um, I'd really love to, I guess, understand how you're targeting the businesses that you're working with. I know the goal is 15 to 21, but as you build out your pipeline of potential potential customers down the line, how are you identifying and bringing these uh, clients on board? Awesome. So I have already worked with folks in the legal field, healthcare human resources. I had clients for the last five years. And so everybody comes to me by me sharing on my Facebook, by me running a few ads and by referrals. So right now people know that I teach folks Spanish. And if you really want to learn, talk to Kay Wanda. And so the way we're going to scale is continuing to get out there, which is why I want a team so that while I'm busy teaching, somebody else is promoting me. So that's how. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask a really quick question? Adam. You said you have teachers in. Do you have a pipeline of customers waiting as well? Do you already have a pipeline that this is just about having the capital to bring in the additional resource and then yes. you can do it? Yes. So now that everybody's kind of feeling a little bit more comfortable after we've been going through COVID, I know it's not over yet. Um, people who were signed up to work with me, obviously they put a pause on it. Um, and then now everybody's coming back. So I'm getting calls every week constantly of people wanting to work with me. And so yes, the potential is there to for me to get so busy that I can't handle anybody else. And so this is why I want to now go ahead and build a team. All right. Super, super. Great questions. Great way to okay, want, great way to take us out. Everyone love the energy. I'm amped. Right? <laughs> so everybody, that was Kwanda. All Hi. right. So thank you. Thank you. Adios. Am I, is that good? Adios? <laughs> Whatever. All right. So now, judges. Judges. Can I say this? No matter what you do, there are going to be some unhappy people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> can't win. You can't win. But if you can all convene, I'm going to take you off the screen. You guys are going to go to your convening room. And then once you're ready, I'm, can I give you five minutes? And then when you're ready, come back in the queue. Just give me the thumbs up and I'll know to bring you back on. Okay? Remember, we're looking for number three, number two, number one and some reasons why, okay? All right, all right. So now, now, audience, let's talk for a little bit, audience. Let's talk. First, can we give everybody a round of applause? Give everybody, throw, give everybody hearts, thumbs up, clap it up, right? Give everyone a round of applause because let me tell you, it is, man, think about the nerves. By the way, there are many people that would never come on and do this, right? The fact that you are, pitching to a couple thousand people who are watching live and thousands are going to watch it later. The fact that you're pitching to judges and you had no idea who the judges were going to be. The fact that you have to pitch almost against right other people. The fact that you have to do it digitally. Just think about that. Think, just think about that, right? For that, we've got, we've got to give it up. Okay. We've got to give it up for them. All right. So, and I see it, I see it. So thank you for that. The next part, the next part is 
everyone truly is a winner. I saw already in the comments, different people saying, hey, sign me up to that product or how can I help you, right? Or I wanna talk offline. I've seen that already in the private chat. Let me talk offline. So this is good. So we know that overall that there will be, most likely there's going to be support for all of the businesses, which is good. But let's talk about a winner, all right? And the reason why I wanna talk about a winner is, is, is that ultimately in this game of life, right? Especially in this game of business is that you have a market and in every market you have who's first and then everyone else in the market, right? Whoever has the largest market share, everyone else, there's, you know, I'm sorry, the largest market share, then you have everybody else. The reason why I want to quote unquote crown a winner today is because I want us to be able to look at why. It's not necessarily the fact that we have a winner. It's the reason why. Why was that person voted number one? Because that way we can look at that and we can, be able, we, we can start to emulate certain things. Not that we want to copy it exactly, but we want to borrow certain things. Maybe if they presented a certain way, if, if they solved their, the customer's problem a certain way, right? If they brought a certain amount of passion, whatever it may be, we can begin to emulate that because these are top investors here that do this every day. Right. So it's, it's, it's good to listen to them in terms of who they think had the most viable business. So this is what I want to ask you. OK, this is what I want to I I ask you a real question here as as an audience, right, as my family. Is I want you to not just in the comments right now say who you would vote for. So here's here's let me let me pose the question. Let's say you had one thousand dollars. OK, you have one thousand dollars, not ten thousand, not a hundred thousand, you know, not not fifty thousand. You have one thousand dollars and you could invest your one thousand dollars in any of the businesses that you heard today. Now, you could have your your reasons for it, but you can invest your thousand dollars in any of the businesses that you heard today. What I want you to do in the comments is and this is going to help everyone is just real quickly. Right. Which business would you invest in and why? The why is important. Which business would you invest in and why? It could be one line. It could be because, you know, Patrick is because he put he puts patties in his car, right? That's all I needed to know, right? Boom. I want to invest because it's patties in the car. Or it could be so and so because, you know, they, they because they do A, B, or C. I want you to put down who you would put the thousand dollars for and then why. I think that's very important right? The why. And there, that way, we're not being derogatory towards any of the any of the competitors. We're just saying, here's the business and here's the reason why. And I'm just curious. And then what I want to do is then I'm going to take a, 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 a poll, a real quick poll. And I, and I may be able to see this right now in this poll. Look, Jacqueline is like, this is tough. That's right. This is tough. This is tough. But please, every single person watching this, even on the replay, write down who you would invest the thousand dollars in and why, because this is going to be helpful for everyone. For the businesses that pitched, they will love this because they'll be able to read through the comments and understand why this is going to be valuable. This is gold to them. This is platinum to them, right? For those that didn't win, this is still going to be interesting to them because they're going to get a chance to see why. And for everyone watching, you get a chance to see everyone else's thought pattern. So I want you to tell me the business and why, the business and why, okay? Please, everyone, the business and why. And my man Ron is saying, congratulations, right? Oh, no, 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 Christy, nope. I see Christy, Christy, see, I know Christy. Nope, you can't do this. There's, you can't split your thousand, Christy. I'm giving you one crisp bill and you can't split it. There's no one that's breaking you change for your thousand dollars, right? So you can't do this, right? I love you, Christy, but you can't do this. I need like, like, boom, my sis Diane said it right here. Adrian, due to the significant value of health advocacy, right? Boom. Sightseeing with Sandy, investing in the future generation of color. See, this is, this is, this is of, of importance. No, no, if, if, if he, no, no, if he gave me three, no, 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 no. I'm not even reading it. This is where I want you to make some hard decisions. You make some hard decisions, right? Make some hard decisions. All right. I see another sightseeing with Sandy because it's teaching black history. See, legacy. This is the boom, right? 
uh k1 the limp right gracias frank by the way frank is the most frank person i've ever seen in the comments <laughs> frank is the most frank person i've ever seen in the comments i love frank man i love looking for his comments all right so ooh, k1 wow i see a wow it's this is this is interesting i see a lot of k1 in shambrika right now i'm going down the list i see a lot of nakwazi wow this is nakwazi here whoa whoa okay okay see spanish for small wow this is tight this is tight all right let me keep going all right we got recover x already established business was my man brian yeah established funding pipeline with massive opportunity nba yep brian was like look i'm already in touch with the nba right so this is like like samuel here's the thing samuel thank you for commenting but please give us the why. Like respect the entrepreneurs enough to give them the why. The why, the why is really what it's all about, right? The why is what it's about. Like my sis right here, I see you, but give us the why. What's the reason behind it? That's really what we're here. That's what Better With Paul this whole time was about, right? It's about the why, right? So give us the why, give us that meat. Don't give us the bone, just give, give, give us the meat. Um, okay, all right, we got Accessible LLC. Couple of votes here for my man Aaron, right? All right. Wow. 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 Okay. All right. Let's see. Let me let me go to Kavan. Let me see what Kavan is talking about. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't believe Kavan did this. Kavan, how are you going to do this, man? How are you going to split the vote? You guys, look, look. You know I love you. This is how you know. This is how you know I'm about to say something. You know I love you all. But splitting the vote doesn't help. Let me repeat that. Splitting the vote doesn't help. This is the reason why we have Donald Trump as president of the United States. Because all y'all out there said, you know what? I'm not going to vote for Hillary. Let me go vote for the Green Party. Even though, like, I don't want to get into politics, but splitting the vote does not work. Okay, splitting the vote does not work. Don't split the vote with me right now. I want you to be direct. Give me the directness. Give me the directness. All right. Uh, uh, this is it. I, see, I respect this. She couldn't pay attention because she was on a business call. I love it. She was like, I'm on a business call, but I'm still going to watch uh, this episode. So, so there you go. Um, all right. Let me see. All right. I see. All right. All right. This is okay. I see. I see a lot of, a lot of, uh, all right, Shambrika, Nikwas. Okay, so here, here's here's what I see. Here's what I see. Oh, I, I see a Paris vote in here because many unhidden talents will get exposure. Okay. All right. Yeah, Tony, I'm sorry. He keeps reminding me. It's not, it's just 45. Just leave it at 45. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, $1,000 on, sp okay. Wow. Okay. All right, my man Erasmus. By the way, much props to Erasmus Thompson. Erasmus, I, we got to give kudos where they are. Erasmus is, he inboxed me and gave me the initial seed of the idea for this pitch, right? Th th really, it came off of me uh, watching his or, or reading his message. And that's what really led me down this trail to do the pitch. So everybody give it up for, for Erasmus. It was this is this is the this is the, this is the big reason why we have he's the big reason and his vote's going behind Brian he says money maker let me go to my sis Uduak uh oh I didn't see Uduak oh Uduak I didn't see where you were uh let's see uh, my sis Tamara is is saying Brian wow this is this is tough Marshawn is is at sightseeing with Sandy this is man this is tough y'all so here's what I see I don't see a clear winner in the audience. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I see in the audience. This is why the judges, and I'm sure the judges are watching this right now. Here's what I see. I see that the audience is picking four people, four people right now. The judges have sightseeing with Sandy. They have Nikwazi's uh, company. So they have Shambrika. They have Nikwazi. There's Brian with Re Recovery X and there's Kwanda. These seem to be floating at the top. So these, these are floating at the top. So here's, let me take my vote. Let me take my vote right now. This is my, this is the final vote. 
I see everyone sliding in with different people, but we've got Brian, Kaywanda, Shambrika, and Nagwazi. Everyone right now put in one of those four names as if you had $1,000, who would get the $1,000? Everyone within those four. And the reason why I'm picking those four is because I just did the test and I see where everyone is at. Okay, I see the judges are almost ready. So let's do the vote. No, Frank. Frank, what are you doing, Frank? Frank. Frank. Man, Frank. I'm about to say you can't come to Jamaica, Frank. You got to give me one. Frank, be Frank. Frank, be Frank. Come on now. All right. Shambrika, Nguazi, Kaywanda, or Brian. That's what the audit, that's what you're telling me. So tell me who who is it going to be? Let me see real quick. Let, let me let me let me take a sense. All right. So now somebody count these up for me. Actually, I'm gonna go to Kavan. Kavan is a numbers man. Kavan. So I could blame you. Kavan, you look at the look, look at these real quick and tell me. Who do you think on those four? Who who do you think the audience is, is picking? Come on, audience. Get it. Kavan, you got to be on LinkedIn too. LinkedIn, also uh YouTube, there's some votes popping there, but 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 Kavan, hit, hit hit LinkedIn real quick. Um, all right, the judges are ready, guys. So Kavan, Kavan, real quick, tell me, tell me who 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 the winner is. Tell me who the winner is, Kavan. And then I'm going to bring on the judges and see if the judges if, if the judges have somebody different. All right, Kavan, come on. Give me somebody. Give me somebody. Let me see. I see it's, yeah, it's tight. It's tight. Okay. Kavan has got, he said, oh, Kavan, oh, Kavan said he can. He's in transit. All right. Let me say this. Right now, I think that the people's champ, I'm just scrolling. I'm just scrolling. And it looks like, I know everybody said do a poll, but it looks like, Ah, <sighs> it looks like it is. It looks like it is. Wow, it's 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 between Naguazi and Shambrika, and I would say that it looks like Sham. It looks to me, it looks like Sham has eked out Naguazi ever so slightly. It looks to me. This is how I'm reading it. It looks like Sham has eked out Naguazi ever so slightly, but it's tough. It's tough. So that way, I, I can't call it. Let me bring on some help. Let me bring on some help. Now, now let me say this. I would not want to be you all right now. I would not want to be you all right now because the audience looks hot right now. It's like it's a fight in the comments right now. So here's, here's what I would love for you to do is if you all can walk us through number three, number two, Number one, and and if you could just give us that that quick critique, um, mm -hmm. and I just want to say thank you. By the way, everybody, hold hold tight because we're going to say our proper thank you to the judges. But judges, the floor is yours. Awesome. So I'm gonna kick kick off really quickly uh, just by sharing that I think I speak on behalf of all the judges when we say we really enjoyed getting to hear everyone's pitch um, and learning more about your companies and the amazing things that you're doing. Uh, before we get into who uh, who came in in third, second, and first place, we wanted to just uh, share high level some things that we think founders could do uh, to, to improve their pitches. So one of the things that we really liked was when founders communicated uh, the problems and gave us context around the problems. So there were a few founders that shared statistics around uh, uh, around their problem and it let us have a, a frame of mind to understand just how large the problem is and who's affected by it. Um, secondly, it was really great when there was a uh, clear and concise solution to said problem uh, that was easily understandable. And then from there we could understand uh, and get more deep into the weeds of how you're solving this and what the business model looks like. Um, so, and the last thing I'd like to say is that the passion really radiated uh, and and it could really come through for a lot of folks when they were uh, sharing what their problem is and what they were solving and the way that folks were able to answer questions and tie it back into those were excellent as well. So thank you, everyone. Without further ado, I'll let the rest of the judges announce. OK, so I have the honor of announcing who is in third place. And we really struggled. And so um, when Paul, I said expect, expect it is because we actually have a tied third position. We couldn't just pick one. 
And so in third place or, or in third position, <laughs> again, <I> was <laughs> <laughs> the judges, the judge is, Can I say this? Judges, has Frank been talking to you guys? Has Frank been talking to you? <laughs> Frank must be Frank must be paying you guys off right now. Is he? No? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, we have a joint third position. Uh, we have a joint third Kiwanda with Spanish for small businesses. And we have the Quasi from South Africa. Um, we really felt like you guys, you know, you really could have been first or second equally. Uh, so please bear that in mind. Uh, we felt you had some traction already. And, and we saw a kind of pathway for you to scale the uh, business that you have. So Congratulations and well done on, on where you are in your journey so far. All right. Yeah. Yes. Paul. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love it. All right. So I am in. I am going to be the one announcing uh, place number two. I want to make sure thank everybody who put this pitch out there. And again, this is to help people know what investors are going to be looking for. Uh, so for number two. Nobody's going to be surprised that I'm the one announcing sightseeing with Sandy as number two. That pitch has the energy. Guys, we could have our own Dora the Explorer or even bigger than that. So thank you so much for putting that pitch forward. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. We like it. So now, now. I have the honor of announcing our winner for today. So before I announce it, I just wanted to explain why we chose this person or this company. We thought the uh, the presenter had a very announced a very clear problem, a very clear solution. Was very passionate about it. It was a product that had been tested, that had been uh, well thought out, that was clear, was ready to go to market. There was a lot of traction already. It was a very clear pathway to how we think uh, this founder could probably scale the business. And so with that in mind, I'm sure you can guess where I'm getting to with this. But our winner for today's session is Brian from Recover Ed. Brian, Brian, Brian. I'm gonna tell you what, guys, I hear you. I hear you. When, when, when Brian, let me say this. When Brian just came up, when I saw his camera set up, I said, oh my God, this, yeah. oh my gosh, he's shooting 4K. He's shooting 4K right now. Yeah. Um, judges, judges, there, 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 it was interesting. Look at that. Everybody said, congrats. Yep. Say congrats, man. Brian, you guys know Brian, when the judge, when, 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 when I went to the, the, uh, the audience, I don't know judges, if you saw this, but he was, he was in the top. When I did the top four runoff, Brian was in, was in the top. The quasi was in the top, right? Sham was in the top. Um, you know, so I think we were all kind of on the same page, but, but, but thank you so much. Like, I mean, this, this was, this, I think this was an incredible experience for all of us. And I always say nothing just happens. I think there's a reason why we were all here at this time and we'll find this out in the future. I think judges, you all are going to do some things together as well. Um, but, um, but, but I, but I just want to thank you. And I know the audience, so audience, give it up for the judges. Thank you. So they didn't, they didn't have to do this, but they came in and, and, and did it. Um, I want to say goodbye to each of the judges individually to make sure that we can support you. Let me let me even go back to this. Uh, Mariola, what can we do? And I want to say this too is I, I I'm Mariola, not only is she with Cornerstone, but I'll say she she's an executive director at a at I'll say a top bank. <laughs> a top bank, right? As, as, as well. It, it it is an honor to have you here. Um, for anyone who wants to reach out to you or to connect with you. How can they do that? Um, it has been an absolute pleasure to be here today, Paul. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, to, to Cornerstone, we are on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn. Uh, you can identify with Cornerstone. Our website is right there. You just put that there, Paul. And you can reach out to me personally on, in, on uh, LinkedIn as well. I'm always more than happy to have a chat and to see how we can, we can connect. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. There you go. Thank you. I mean, see, that, that's massive. Think about that. She just said, if you need a chat, feel free to reach out to her. That's, I mean, that, that's a connect. And let me tell you, when you find out about the top bank, <laughs> top <laughs> bank, <laughs> then you're going to be even happier. You know what? It's a blessing. Thank you. 
Thank much you. love to, for, uh, to, to Cornerstone, by the way. Much love. Thank you very much. So we will see you. All right. So, 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 so there we go. There we go. All right. Next up, coming to the mic, none other than Kofo. Thank, thank you so much oh, for being here. No, thank you. No, this is amazing. I'm going to have two call for actions, if that's okay. Uh, the first is to offer my services to anyone who needs help. I spent all day helping startups to build and to scale and to grow their companies. That's what I do at Founders Factory Africa. So if you are building the continent at all, uh, Africa continent, that is, please reach out. I'm more than happy to give some of my time and help a business really think about its pathway to market or how it's going to scale its products. Um, but I've just started a platform also called Bulb uh, with an O rather than a U. Uh, it's for black founders, entrepreneurs, and investors. It's essentially a platform to help showcase some of these amazing businesses specifically that are looking for investment. So if you're trying to raise capital, looking for investment, we want to showcase those quality and amazing black businesses to the investment community. So go on Instagram, bulb.online or the website, bulb.online and, and find me there and we can chat some more. Thank you so much, Paul. All right, sis, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate everything, everything. So everybody say goodbye to Kofo. That was a major, I, I just want to underscore this. I mean, some people will really appreciate this. Others of you may not really fully grasp what I'm talking about here is that both Mariola and Kofo, who are well recognized in the landscape of investing and supporting founders have just said, if you have a question, reach out to them. Think about that. If you have a question, reach out to them, right? This is massive, right? This is, this is this massive blessing, massive blessing. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's, let's, let's go to, uh, I see, well, Denisha, she's next in my, in my feed right here. Hi. Denisha, thank, thank you so much for being here and participating and supporting. How can we support you? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So uh, two things. Um, the first one is I re recently launched a newsletter called Friends and Family. Uh, the goal of this newsletter is to connect uh, founders and entrepreneurs to non-dilutive sources of capital. So pitch competitions, grants, um, accelerators. Uh, so feel free to follow it and it shares weekly grants and pitch competitions that you can apply to. Um, and then the second, I'm happy to speak to any founders as well. Um, I spend a lot of my time I'm doing fundraising strategy and so happy to always help figure out investor pipelines. Yeah. Denisha, you know, I think you're going to run the world one day. <laughs> I, th I do. I think, I think one, one day you're going to run, run the world. And I think that's even more reason for everybody to connect with you. <laughs> <laughs> you, were not, you were 19 hanging out with us old heads. <laughs> like you're going to run. The world. <laughs> All right. Denisha, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Much love to you. Guys, let me underscore. Denisha just said, if you need anything to reach out to her, join her newsletter. I'm telling you, this is a this is this is like I feel like the plug right now. I officially feel like the plug. But what I'm so proud of is that these judges came together. They gave up their time and they're telling you to reach out to them. Like the, the like all the all the keys. Remember what we talked about at the beginning. It's like no, we 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 have to em emancipate ourselves from mental. Oh, hold on for a second. Let me bring up my man David to talk about. Give me some Bob Marley quotes right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Liam wanted to say hello, so this is my Liam. Papa. Liam, Liam, what's going on? <laughs> the other Liam. All right, good. Daddy's getting the wrap up. <laughs> Liam. Can, but, but Dave, one is Liam is breaking it down, right? We got to emancipate ourselves from mental from slavery. mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying, right? This is how we do it, David. This is how we do it, David. How can we support you? Well, put up the link, slash <laughs> bronson We're going to be putting together a special class. I'm a director for FBF. Uh, founded by Renee King here in the U.S. It, at this point, it's a rewards-based crowdfunding website. So if you have a business that needs to raise capital, you can list right now today on there. We're going to eventually look at rolling out the equity crowdfunding piece. So uh, staying quiet, some big things to come. And we did a whole bunch of sessions <laughs> in, in the middle of in May, free of charge. We did Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and, th and Saturdays. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. And we helped a 
ton of founders to help with their pitch decks, business model, go-to-market strategy. We'll do it again. So reach out that one and then you can find me. Google David Mulling, send me a direct message. Paul, since the last time when we did our video, I've had five different people contact me to help them with pitch decks. I've met with all of them. And I actually have one of them on hold right now because I have a call that was scheduled with our oh, well. follow-up. <laughs> so oh, okay. out of this. So reach out, trust me. I will make the time I want to help people with with their pitches and with their, their business model and especially with their pitch decks. There you go. David. Liam. I'll Thank David, Liam. Yeah, thank Liam. Time in yeah. <laughs> Liam, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for sharing daddy with us for a little yes. bit. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> David, much love. Much love. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Liam, we'll see you. All right, yeah. take care. All right. All right, bye-bye. Guys, David Mullings just said the last time he was on, folks reached out to him. He had one person on hold. This is one thing that if you know me, you will know this about me, is that I honestly, in full transparency, I don't hold anyone in my network back. If I know someone, my goal is to give you every bit of my network. I think a lot of people try to hold back on who they know and they don't want the people that they know to connect with other people. They're like, you know, they're just real iffy about that. I look at it completely different. A matter of fact, I think that there's even there's even more power in being a super connector. I've been trying to 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 reshape my life around trying to connect as many people as possible. Right. This is it. Like and maybe the favor doesn't come back to me directly. Maybe it comes back to my kids or my kids, kids. But the favor always comes back. And I want to encourage you all to know that. What I do, what you see me do, I'm trying to model the behavior that I think is integral in succeeding in business and succeeding in building a brand. And that's the reason why I invite these folks, investors like them, invite different people in is because. I just want to make sure um, that, that that everyone's connecting. By the way, uh, Brian, Brian, if you're watching, if you could join us, I want to make sure you join us, Brian, to, to, to say some words uh, so we so we can congratulate you on the way out for, for winning, uh, which well deserved, well deserved win, Brian. So I want to make sure that we, we congratulate you. A couple announcements real quick, because this is our last Friday. This is our last Friday with Better With Paul. A lot of people, I saw a lot of people asking about saying that they had questions about the, the panel, et cetera. I do a recap every week of Better With Paul. I'm going to keep doing this because we're moving to the podcast. There's a podcast coming. There's a podcast to come in. Um, and so I want you to make sure that you um, get on this, the newsletter, so you can get all the information, all the recaps, all the announcements. When we do more pitch competitions, which by the way, I've already seen enough from today to tell you. I'll, I'll tell you right now. You'll be the first to hear this. I'm going to host at least one pitch competition every quarter for the next year. One pitch competition every quarter for the next year. Right. I decided it just 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 looking at today. And so if you want if you want first in on it. And by the way, I'm going to try to put some money, attach some money to the next one. But if you want in, then make sure you're 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 on the newsletter, right? I want to make sure that you are on the newsletter. Uh, that's one. The second thing is, uh, remember this, guys. We we talk a lot about Jamaica. We're going to Jamaica in 2021. I was talking to Jay Hurt. Uh, I see Carla Friday also in the comments. Carla Friday, Jay Hurt. They are leading uh, the our, our Jamaica planning. We are. Already, we're in talks with two hotels in Jamaica right now. We're just seeing who's going to give us the, the best deal. Once we get information, you know, that we can announce, we'll start announcing. But I love the incoming that we're getting. Uh, I love the love that we're getting for, for Jamaica. So I want to make sure that, that you know about that. Uh, also, make sure you know about this. We have groups, right? This is the last Friday of Better With Paul. But we're not going to lose contact with each other. We've got the podcast. We've got the newsletter. We're doing different events, right, that are going on. But how do you stay in touch? Get on, get in the groups. Now, we have a group on LinkedIn. You just search for Better With Paul. And we also have a group on Facebook. You just use this. By the way, there are a lot of Better With Pauls, I found out, right? Which is not good. But we are, we've got the name Better With Paul, folks. Uh, Facebook.com groups Better With Paul. Just so you know, 
I we have hundreds of people now. I think there's 300 people queued up to get into the groups. I haven't yet allowed anyone into the groups because I want to make sure that we set some ground rules, right? I want to make sure that we that this is not like I've never opened up a group. I've been on Facebook for I don't know 10 years, but I've never opened up a group. So I want to make sure that if I'm going to open up a group, that I, I got to be about it, right? And I want to come up with some rules, some 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 concepts, so that we could be of of support to each other. So I will start opening up the groups this weekend, but get on, you know, get 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 on that one. Everyone's like, "Did you copyright?" Yes, I did get the trademark, right? So yes, I did get that. I did get that. Um, so make sure you know about that. The last thing that I want to mention, I'm still waiting for Brian to jump on. Is so last announcement is this. A lot of folks have been joining us for the mastermind. The mastermind starts next week. Deadline is this Sunday night. I'm sorry, this Monday. This or no, no, this Sunday. I think it's this Sunday. I don't know what the deadline is, but I think the deadline is, is, is this Sunday. There get in, right? Jill is getting hit with a lot of people saying, but I can't afford this. I can't do this. We've worked out something for everyone, whether it's a discount payment plan, discount and payment plan, no matter what it was, get in, get in, right? Get in. Uh, the de deadline is this Sunday, I believe. It's on there somewhere. I think the deadline is this Sunday. Um, so so make, make sure that you get in. Uh, all right. Thank you. Erasmus said it's Monday. All right. He's, he's correct to me. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see. Yeah, I don't see uh, Brian. So so then let me just close out. Let me just close out. How was today? You know, I like to ask you, how was today? How was today? How was today, guys? I'm going to tell you what I loved about today. I'm, I'm going to give you my raw because, you know, I like to get raw. I want to talk about one of the judges comments real quick. Because I, lo I loved it. Let me tell you what my favorite comment was. My favorite question. My favorite question was when Kofo asked Paris about, hey, wait, you, wait hold on. You're a white guy. You're talking about Afroflex. Like, what, what, like, what's going on? This is what I love. And that was actually the moment that I decided I'm going to continue to do these pitch competitions because... I've, I've actually hosted pitch competitions going back, like way back, you know, when pitch competition, like, like way, 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 way back. And, you know, it's rare that I see a platforms that allow people who maybe are not the most seasoned to pitch. Right. You know, for, like if you just have an idea, it's rare that you'll like really get a chance to pitch. I like that. So that's one thing that led me to say, let's keep going. But I also like forums that allow people to speak truth to power. And that's what Kofo's question was. That was a question. That was a truth to power question. And I loved it. It was an elephant in the room. She called it like my sis um, um, says, you know, call a thing a thing. You know, Ayanla, call a thing a thing. She called it a thing. She called it out. I like that. Right. Because we're thinking about it, right? There's so there's so many. I've been in so many rooms with investors where it's clear they're thinking about something. And most of the time, these are not black investors, right? Which I want to get to that in a second, how we had an all black panel. But let me just actually let me just get to that real quick. I don't want to skip around. Let me just say one thing that I that I love. There was one moment I have never seen this in my life. Brian was pitching. Brian, like Brian man, brought it, right? Brian, we all saw, was, was, you know, white man, okay? And he was pitching to four black investors. Have you ever seen this? I haven't seen that. I mean, you tell me if you've ever seen that. I've never seen that. I thought there was something beautiful about that. On Juneteenth, think about this. On in 1865. Think about this. We were just being emancipated in 1865, right? We were just being emancipated in 1865. Fast forward to Juneteenth 2020, and you've got four investors now in control, and you have a white man pitching to them. Come on. There was, some, there was power behind that. There was power behind that. There was something beautiful ab ab about that. Right. There was something beautiful about that. And so 
Let me stop. Let me just stop. Let me just stop. My sister, this community, this community is the future. We are the future right here, right? My sister says, look, look at this. Jennifer Dixon, I've never seen that. Look at that. A first on Juneteenth. I've never seen that. That was power. That was power. That shows you how much power you have, right? That shows you how strong our future is, right? Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm yelling now. Why, why, why do you all get me like this? And every time I finish, you know how Jill knows I'm done? Jill knows that we're done when Jill says, oh, yeah, you've stopped yelling. <laughs> so that, that's how I know you're done. All right, guys, I'm done. I'm, I'm feeling good right now. I want to thank the judges once again. I want to thank I want to thank you all once again. I want to thank all. Let me thank the judges. Thank you. Let me thank everyone who pitched. The fact that you got on here and you fought through that nervousness to pitch, that shows you you are headed in the right direction. We all got your back. Everybody in this community, we got your back, right? We got your back. So don't worry. Don't worry. The next thing I want to do is I want to thank you all for being a part of the community, for supporting. I saw people already talking about different ways they could support. This is the best community on the planet. I say that to anybody, the best community on the planet. So thank you. I will see you on Monday for the very final Better With Paul. Monday is just me basically saying goodbye, right? I'll give you all an opportunity to say your goodbyes, anything that you've learned along the journey. I want to remind you also then the next day the podcast drops, right? And I promise you I've got some fire on the podcast. Uh, and I just want to say have a blessed weekend. Have a blessed, blessed weekend. And I'll say some goodbyes as we roll on out. Nadia, there you go. Kira said, this is a staple in my week. LA says, you're about to make me cry. No, don't cry. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We're just getting started, y'all. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. Erasmus, much respect. Much respect. I respect you. I respect everybody right in this community, but thank you very much for, for lighting this up, right? There you go. Natasha brought it. The judges, everyone who pitched, big up to the community. Monday, we'll be signing the yearbook. That's right. We're signing the yearbook on Monday, y'all. Right? Everybody stay blessed. Stay blessed. Have a great weekend. I see you. Linda or L Linda says she wants the DJ. All right, Linda, you asked for the DJ. Let me see if I can bring back DJ Astronaut. Let me, let me jump on DJ Astronaut real quick and see. Barry, thank you. K, I can't even get to everybody. Periscope, can't even get to everybody. Christine, can't even get to everybody. Much respect, Manny, much respect. I will see you all. Have a blessed weekend. Much love. I'm gone.